Guys, how we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. I am excited today. I'm trading in my wheeled skid steer for a track steer. I'm gonna tell you why. If you enjoyed it, it would help me out if you'd give this video a thumbs up. If you wanna see more cool stuff about developing this property, hit that subscribe button. And if you want something for your tractor or your skid steer, head on over to goodworkstractors.com. And if you are looking for a high quality made in America solution for stability on your machine, check out Bore Wheel Spacers, link down below. So this skid steer has nearly brand new tires on it, uh, about 330 hours or so on the skid steer and we just had to put new tires. So this originally lived at my shop on a paved surface and I wanted to use it a little bit off-road, you know, on dirt or mud or snow. But given the primary purpose was going to be on a paved surface, I thought a wheeled machine would be the way to go. We burned through the first set of tires in a little, well, around 300 hours. I didn't mind that so much because a wheeled machine is a lot less expensive than a track machine. I thought tracks would get ripped up and be very costly to replace, primarily being used on the asphalt parking lot. However, this skid steer now lives at this new property, 140 acres that we have to develop and kind of clean up, get it back into shape, put trails in and, and open up the fields and all sorts of crazy projects, but it's gonna live out here on the dirt. And so these wheels are proving to be less than ideal. First, they leave deep ruts wherever they go. You know, the PSI compared to what a track would leave that's all spread out is very significant. And so even when it's semi-dry, you still see, especially in some of the overhead shots that Chris has done, just the ruts, anywhere this is driven. I'm expecting that to improve significantly with the tracks, maybe not disappear, but a significant improvement. Secondly, it just gets stuck. I was out here last weekend, it had rained hard the day before, and I thought, you know, it's pretty high and dry ground. Maybe it'd be drained out and, and dried up enough to get the skid steer and do some work. And boy, was I wrong. I was in there for about two minutes before realizing I was going to get stuck in an area basically just like this, relatively flat, no standing water, but it was just muck and nasty and it was futile. There was no point in doing it. And so time and time again, I keep going back to last summer with a 324E, a slightly smaller wheeled skid steer that I had, where it got stuck in the blink of an eye on a similar high and dry piece of ground. There was almost just like a soft pool of mud that was hidden under bushes and branches and I didn't really see it. And it took us like two hours to get unstuck out of that. That plays over and over my mind. And this is just not gonna be suitable for this application. I actually sent out a survey to all my viewers on YouTube and on Facebook because I was strongly considering just getting some OTT you know, tracks, over the tire tracks. You can get steel, you can get rubber. Then you kind of have the flexibility or the versatility of going back and forth. However, I have no plans, no intentions of this ever leaving the property. I just felt like I was going to be kind of like what I did with these tires. You know, these are a very deep lug. I thought they would be well, they are, they're, they're designed for mud and off-road use and they're just not doing what I want them to do. And I felt like getting the OTT tracks would be a big improvement. In the back of my head, I always felt like the 333G is where I was gonna end up and I just kinda jumped that hurdle from the OTT tracks and went right to the track machine. So in that survey, and we got a lot of responses, that was great, thank you for all the feedback. You know, some of you definitely said, just get the OTTs and others said, go with the 333G. The other version I was considering was one of those JCB teleskids. Um, you know, it's got a little boom that reaches out a little bit further. It's got a side entry door, which that's one of the big things I hate about a skid steer is the front entry with you needing to have the attachment all the way down or all the way up. That's not really ideal. So I love the side entry aspect of it, but there was enough feedback in the survey and other places online that kind of knocked on the reliability of the JCB. I just wasn't ready to gamble with my money. So that 333 is gonna be just about identical to the 330 that I have. They're all in the 91, I think, horsepower range up to 100, which is the 333, but there's a 330G, the 331, which is a track version, the 332, which is a few horsepower bigger than uh, this guy here, and then the granddaddy of them all, the 333G. There's really not many other differences besides just the tracks. I love the layout, I love the interior, I like the controls, I like the buttons, I'm familiar with it. It all works well for me, so I'm gonna be totally comfortable making the transition. It's really about the tracks. Well, actually, I think I just heard on the road through the brush, the new one getting dropped off. Well, the new to me, it is used, but they're taking away this guy right here. They're gonna be picking it up after they drop off the new one. Let's go see what it's all about. 
Hey, uh, yeah, it, you went, yeah, there you go. If you back up and then uh, we're right across the, the road, there's actually a truck with a skid steer here now too getting dropped off. The other delivery going on right now is a brand new trailer. There is a major trailer shortage. So as soon as I could find one available anywhere, I ordered it. I needed something heavier for the track machine. That weighs, I think it's 1,500 or 2,000 pounds more than my wheeled version. And then I also need something for my Manitou. My current PJ trailer has the length. It doesn't have the axle capacity to handle the load. As far as the trailer goes, you know, you hear good and bad things about big techs. You hear good and bad stuff about PJ as well, along with just about everybody else that's out there. You know, trailers are worked hard. I feel like they're all gonna have their shortcomings. And uh, you know, my PJ certainly has, but it, overall it's treated me well. And I expect something that lives a pretty hard life to have issues from time to time. Um, overall, it was a pretty good price point. Uh, it was 14 something for this 22,000 um, GBWR trailer. You know, you have the twin axles there. You got the mega ramps. It's a 20 plus five, right? So you have a 20 foot flat deck plus five more for the ramps, which is all I need. I got this for my Manitou. I got it for my heavy skid steer. I didn't want the extra length. I didn't need it. It's an application specific trailer. And so while the skid steer is gonna live out here at the property, you know, I wanna have that independence to be able to transport it into service or take it anywhere I need to. The same thing with my Manitou. My PJ trailer over there is about a 15,000 GVWR uh, rated trailer. So by the time you deduct the trailer weight itself, it can't hold the skid steer and it can't hold the Manitou. As far as the trailer goes, I got mine at I-90 <laughs> Enterprises. Phil over there is who I worked with. I did everything over the phone. He uh, had a freight hauler who hauled this over to me. Let's see, I paid for it on Friday, came through on Monday, and today is Tuesday. It went pretty quick. So he was very responsive, very easy to work with, very professional. So if you're in the market for a trailer, reach out to Phil. Alrighty guys, I can't wait any longer. I wanna get in there and play around. So if you enjoyed the video, I'd love to get a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button to see more. And if you're looking for something for your tractor or skid steer, check out goodworkstractors.com.